My name is Manushka, and we're just so thankful that you have joined us today for this 2 p.m. divine discussion. Uh, we are just so grateful that we've been able to open up the doors for what we're calling Voo Basil. And the theme of this entire week is divine design, that we've been able to collaborate together to create this space. And for us, we wanted to stop and pause throughout the day to have different discussions. And we're, our hope is that these discussions will inspire you. We hope that you leave out of here, that you've learned something. We brought in some incredible people that we're just so grateful that they get to lend their voice into this conversation. And so this is going to be a good one. I'm really excited. This is called The Writer's Room. And so we've got some incredible singers, songwriters, musicians that are going to get up here on the stage and just talk about their process. What we have learned about creativity and, and about art is that it's a process, that it takes time, that people have worked really hard to create, and it takes patience, it takes diligence, and I can't wait to hear from each and every one of these incredible, incredible artists and speakers. And we've got Luke Berry, who is our worship director here at VU that's going to be sharing with us. I can't wait to hear from us. We also have got Pastor Dawn Cherie. She is the founder and lead pastor and really just has her hands in all things worship here at VU. So just even in the new music, we just released a Christmas EP. Did anybody hear that? Oh, come Emmanuel, that's a vibe. So if you haven't heard it yet, go get that. It's a Miami Christmas. But uh, we're, we're just so grateful that we get to step into the different spaces of music. But we've got some guests with us today that we cannot wait to hear from. We've got Doe, who is family. She's a Grammy-nominated artist, and she has written so many different songs that we have come to know and that we love. She released uh, an EP this year, and she's... Uh, embarking on this solo career, but then also just in different spaces within worship. And I think just her voice in this generation, I know it's been a blessing to me, but a blessing to so many. You've probably heard her on different projects, whether it's with Jonathan McReynolds or through Maverick City. She has just been able to collaborate with so many different artists and we're grateful that she is in the room with us. We've got Andy Minio. <laughs> hip-hop artist and producer hailing from New York and his contribution to the hip-hop space has been inspiring. You've probably heard his music all over the place. And there was a point in time on Instagram where all I heard was Andy Minio and so you've probably heard it. Who heard that before? <laughs> I'm about to trip over here, but I'm okay. I'm safe. <laughs> so grateful for what Andy's going to share with us just as a writer, as a creative in this space. Can't wait to hear from him. But then we also got Aiden King in the building. <laughs> Part of Hillsong music, singer, songwriter, so many different songs that we sing collectively as a body that he has been able to write. Uh, the things that Hillsong Young and Free is saying, Hillsong worship. Uh, he's been able to be at VU a few times to sing and to lead us in worship. And we're just so grateful for his contribution in the music space. But it's going to be incredible for us to jump into this conversation and just to hear from people who are on a journey, who are writing and still learning and going to teach us today about what it means to be a writer, what the process is to write. So maybe you're a songwriter in the room, maybe you're a musician, maybe you're just a writer or just you're just here for the conversation. I believe that no matter where you find yourself on the spectrum that you can learn from the process. So come on, why don't we give it up for our incredible guests as they take the stage. really thankful to share this moment with all of you. I see a lot of faces that I recognize and I see a lot of new faces in this room. And I think that's really what these three days are all about. Uh, meeting new friends and connecting with people that have been on the journey for a while now. And I'm grateful for all four of you. I think all four of you, your writing has made an impact in my life. And I'm thankful for the creativity within you, but I'm also just thankful for your willingness to step out and to allow the things that have been deposited in your heart to take a life of its own. And uh, I think for all of you, this is the writing room, but I do want to say this from the get. I don't know if you are a writer, if you're an aspiring writer, if you're a prolific writer in this room, but I hope that this conversation 
inspires and encourages you to tell your story. Because it doesn't matter how old you are in this room or how many times you've tried and feel like you've failed to put pen to paper to tell the story that's inside your heart. It's never too late to begin again. It really isn't. And your story is gonna touch someone's life. And I think it's important. You know, the thought of a blank page the thought of what could be. A blank page can be overwhelming. Is anybody with me? It can be overwhelming. It can be intimidating. But there's this beauty within of all the possibilities and the fact that you, using the creativity that's been given to you by God, could create something that no one in all of history has created. And here is this beautiful divine design that takes shape. And how does it begin? How does it continue? How does it end? And when is it actually completed? These are the kind of questions that we want to discuss today. And so I want to dive in with all of you guys. Thank you for being with us today. I I love having conversations with all four of you about the process. I've gotten to write with a couple of you. He, on different projects. But Andy, I just wanted to dive straight in. I will never forget the conversation I had with you in the middle of quarantine. You came on, Rich and I were doing a live IG. It was one of the funniest conversations ever. And I think I that- you got a lot of emails from that. No, stop. I just know that you bring life to any conversation that you're a part of. I think the content of your life is life-giving. It's encouraging. I want to hear a little bit of your first experience in creating, in writing. Where did it start? Was there someone that inspired you? Was there someone that you collaborated with? Was there a moment that you can point back to that would say like, oh, that was a catalyst for where I am today? Yeah, a lot of it, um, it's just like most hobbies, it starts out as just fun, right? Like you find something you enjoy, you do it with some friends, and then someone's like, I'll pay you for it. And you're like, oh, no, now it's my job. No, uh, uh, that's how it's st- like most things are just passion. I think the reason why you get good at something is because you enjoy it enough to do it a ton. Yeah. And then if you keep doing it, then you'll get better at it. Right. So I think that's like that's why it's uh, just something we always say, like, yo, find something you're passionate about, because then you'll endure failing enough. And I also think. uh you have to fail a ton to be good. That's the people see like a, a really good artist and they're like, I'll never be that. I was like, dude, my song sucked so much <laughs> for like 10 years, right? To finally get like one good one. And I think, you know, I, I'm a process artist, which is why I love this installation. I love showing people how I got there and good. what I did. Good. And that's why I have that project. Um, work in progress, which shows like, these are the unfinished songs and why they didn't come out. And I like to show that. Um, so I'm an over talker, guys. So I'll, no, we want to hear more. What was the what? first song or what was the first was, project that you worked on? It was with friends and we, all we did was take, uh, it was as a joke. Like we took parodies of other people's songs and replaced the lyrics and just tried to make each other laugh. Let's go. Yeah. Weird it was like Weird Al style. And so and then, um, I got like a little mini computer microphone, like the one's the pencil joint, and you plug it in, and uh, we tried recording ourselves, and that's that was the beginning of it, like hearing my voice, my 12-year-old prepubescent voice, yo, you know, like hearing it on a beat, it uh, it was like, wow, this is amazing, I want to do this, you know, and 10 years later, after all my teen years of practicing and trying, I signed my first record deal and became, you know, started doing it, but... That was the beginning, and I fell in love with it uh, enough to want to keep practicing and trying. And I think, and and this is just my assumption, I was like, I think because social media wasn't around, I had the freedom to fail without the criticism. Because now it's like, oh, I'm going to make a song, and I'm going to put it on the internet tomorrow, you know? I I was like, there's just notebooks full of terrible rhymes that I got to be bad uh, enough to finally get good. So it's hard for you guys creating, uh, starting out, but don't be discouraged is kind of my thought process. You got to fail a lot to get good. Yeah. And when, when you talk about social media, I'd love to talk about that a little bit more because I think that, like you said, the process is different because of social media today. What do you think the blessing is in that? And what's like the burden? What, what can the detriment be? The blessing is you have no more gatekeepers so you can get direct access to someone who likes your stuff. 
back in the day, I had to be like, yo, please double XL, please stamp me so that the culture will think I'm good. Now people can circumvent that and go straight to you. So that's the, the benefit, which is why I think there's going to be so many more middle class artists in the future. There's not going to be the big Adele's and the Drake's and like these ubiquitous artists. I think it's going to be a, a lot more middle class artists that make a killing and they have direct to their fan base. And that's it. So I think that's the benefit. The detriment is you may skip steps that should be part of your development. So it's like, I didn't do three years of a and and developing and practicing. It's all on the internet forever. And I can't, you know, it's like you see these like 17-year-old, 18-year-old kids pop with one song. And then they have nothing around them to help develop them. And then they, they fizzle out really fast because they didn't get the to go through the steps. So I think that's the double-edged sword of it. Doe, what do you think about that? I feel like you could weigh in on that. You've been writing your entire life um, with culture today. And as you've grown up in this, how have you seen it shift? Um, I think I can agree with him. I think there's something you said that probably nobody else heard, but he was talking about how he has like journals of, of bad rhymes that he wrote. And I think there's something special about using your hand to trace the words that are coming out of your soul, you know? And I think we don't get to do that because we have computers, but every now and then I'll pull out a journal and I'll, I'll write a song with my hand. And um, there's something powerful about the spoken word, but there's something even more powerful about the written word. And, and I think that it, it allows you to connect to, to what you're saying by using your... And so there's just a lot that, that used to be a part of the art of writing and the art of expressing that we don't have anymore. Um, it's not Actually, it's not that we don't have it. I think that we just have to be intentional these days to go back and, and grab and value those things that bring life to being an artist and expressing. It's yeah. beautiful. So Dominique and I grew up for part of our life together, and her family has an extraordinary, um, I would say, discipline of writing and of embracing the unknown of creativity. I think it's really extraordinary. I would love if you'd just share a little bit about how you were raised in this not not just like a one time a year creative writing camp, but like you were immersed in your home yeah. in an experience of pulling out that divine creativity. What was that like? How did it spark the creativity within you? Yeah. Um, I think it would encourage a lot of people of what what their home and your atmosphere actually could be like as you raise a family. Yeah, so five kids and two parents and... Um, Every, all five of us are creative in our own way. All five of us are musical, um, but all and five incredible of us, artists. Am I? It's not just like yeah, all of you incredible. Yeah, all of my my siblings are amazing. My baby sister is here somewhere. The girl that looks like me, you see her. <laughs> That's my sister. Um, <laughs> but like, um, so my dad was a pastor. So we grew up in the, in a home where um, my dad would make us get up in the summer. At like 9 a.m. every morning, we we had to be up for prayer, right? Like, we would try to act like we were in too deep of a sleep to wake up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he would come in and be like, get up. Uh, it's time to pray. Uh. You know? That was, the, that was it for us, yeah. And, uh, but prayer for us, my dad was like, we're not, we're not going to sit in here while I pray. He was like, you guys are going to get on your instruments, and you're going to play before the Lord. And you're going to sing before the Lord. So a lot of the songs that we wrote as a family, and I didn't, as you're saying that, I'm connecting it. Like that actually did spark writing for me. We didn't know we were doing that. So a lot of the songs that went on our first album, I were like written in prayer. Like it was just songs that we- Is that the album I sang BGVs on? That one, and yes. This is my claim to fame, y'all. I sang Big GVs on the first There's Forever Jones album. There, album. Yeah. There's Proud one somewhere out there in Don Shoes, yes. And it was so, that was a wonderful experience. But yeah, so. Thankful to support. <laughs> she was great. So much auto-tune. Yeah. <laughs> just play, I just play. So <laughs> much. There was no so, auto-tune. Actually, that, that album is not on iTunes was, because it's not. We, we sang on it. It's just. That's not why. But go back. <laughs> Let's spark that creativity. I want to hear it. So what sparked the creativity? Yeah, we're just moments like that. And then like, I mean, 
I think mom and dad knew all of us were creative. So like I had a passion for playing the piano. If, if they saw a pianist and, and I was on the tip of my chair in service, just staring at him, they would walk me up to that person and say, hey, pray over my daughter's hands and, and pr- just pray over the, her that she could master and play, you know. And the whole time, though, mom's behind him, like, <laughs> just rebuking anything bad. But, like, you pray over her in Jesus' name. <laughs> you know, but they want, they fed every dream. They fed every dream. There were no rules, right? And there was no, like, you're not going to do well doing this, and you're not going to, they didn't squash anything. And so I, it was cultivated in me. And um, so, and I to this day can can wake up at hey Ashley, can wake up at two a.m. and go, and if I'm at mom and dad's house, I can go downstairs and say, hey, listen, I gotta show you something. Wait, can you sit up real quick? I gotta show you this song, and they'll listen because it's it's important in our house songwriting. It's beautiful. I want to start talk about the beginning. How do you begin a song? And Aiden, you've written so many songs that have gone around the world. Songs that I wake up with these songs and these melodies in my heart. And I know that so many of us in this room would say the, the same. How do you start a song? Um, how do you find the inspiration? I mean, it's different every time. Um, I feel like for me, I started writing because I wanted to express something that was happening inside of me that I couldn't do with words, like just speaking about them or even I don't know, I felt like there was this need for me to like, I don't know, write about what God was talking to me about. And when I first started writing, the reason I started writing was I went to church, had this experience in worship where I was like, this is something feels incredible about this and I want to be a part of it. And so like starting a song, I feel like it has to come from a space where I feel inspired by maybe what God's speaking to me about, the conversations I'm having. And if I try to write a song without having like a thought or a theme or a reason for writing the song, it it never really works out. And I'm learning that more and more as I've gotten older. It's like, why am, I have to keep asking myself, like, why am I sitting down to write a song? Like, what's this for and what's it about? And so knowing that um, is everything, honestly. And then, but then practically, I think it's just like taking the time and like, I don't know, like, like what Andy was saying, like writing lyrics and words and worth getting it out. It's almost like, and sometimes that takes weeks and months and years of just getting out the things that you don't need to say and then you, the right thing comes. And so it's, I don't know. It's for me, it's very much like I need to be inspired. I need to sit at a piano. I need to just sit there and have no one around for a second. And one of the things that like I, I, I always say and remind myself of is like never bring the editor into the room when you're writing, you know, it's like go into the room and throw pain and feel, don't get in your way, like don't get in your own way. And then come back and edit later for sure, but don't let him come. Don't let him come in the room when you're, when you're creating. And so that for me is how I start. Just try to be weird and out there and strange and like just not take myself too seriously, have fun, like Andy said, but then also like, yeah, I don't know. Just allow that room and, and, and fostering an environment, a space that is inspiring and creative. And I think we neglect that a lot of the time. Like we think, okay, cool. Like I've got to have the perfect words and the, you know, and I'm writing about this today and we're writing at 11 a.m. and it's going till five. And I think it's the other things around the actual session that are so important to think about the environment, the space and whatnot. I love what you said that it's, Throwing paint. Throwing paint. And especially being in this room. We look around this room and it's covered with these splatters of paint. I think as we're talking about writing that this room takes on a whole other dynamic for me as you just put those two dots together that you can't hold back. You got to be vulnerable. You got to be authentic. You got to have confidence that you can throw it all out on the table as you collaborate with other people. Luke, I love writing with you. I think that you're someone who lives with a deep inspiration and can look around and take very simple things but reach beyond the surface and find depth. When it comes to songwriting for you, how, how do you begin? How do you find that spark? I think that I've had um, two, 
a opposite experiences of writing. Like Aiden's saying, it's saying it's different every time, but I basically have two categories. So in my life, probably three or four times, I feel like a song has just kind of like come to me and it's almost whole or it's very, very quick and easy. Um, but that's like 5%. And then 95% is the other thing, which is we schedule a time and we sit down and we just kind of like bang our heads against the wall um, until something comes out. But I think that when, so it, it, those things are so totally different, you know? And um, like, but then like Aiden said, after you've got to come back and, and there is always editing that happens and improving and tweaking. Um, so I've, I think that whole experience um, is the exception to the rule for me. And then the, the general thing is the practice, you know, and for me, this is part of my job. And so there's a discipline and there's a schedule and there are deadlines around it, which is really helpful for me. Cause if I didn't have those things, I probably wouldn't do a lot of stuff creatively because it's just, it can be very hard. And so obviously you and pastor rich have uh, initiated a lot of the things that I've ended up being a part of either bringing an idea or bringing an expectation, hey, I'd like you to do this or work on something or in this month, we want to have something done, you know? That's really helpful for me. But the actual process of writing something, I think you get a general sense of something you think you want to say, um, but you don't know what you want to say yet. And of course, if you knew what you wanted to say, the song would be done. So it's like, it's kind of what everyone's been saying already. I, I like to I'm big on words, and so that's why I like writing collaboratively because someone like you or, or Ashley are very great, uh, very good with melody. Um, you're, you're good at all parts of the process. <laughs> it's true on, on the lyrical side and that, but, but I think you bring melodic ideas so quickly, and then it helps me to give me, you know, a structure to fill with words. Um, so we always start a song with an idea. It could be a word or a scripture or a theme, or I want to write a song about whatever. Um, but then as I start to get words out, it's almost like this thing of recognition where it's like, when you find the right phrase, it feels right. And you go, yeah, that's it. You know? So you just throw stuff out there. And I like, I love what Doe was saying about writing on paper, but every time I try to do that, I always like ended up switching to my phone. There's always a point in every writing session where my phone dies because um, I don't charge it overnight uh, for battery purposes. Um, I think I heard, Tell us more. I'm just I think kidding. I heard. A, I literally think. Yeah, exactly. No, I don't want to get into it too much, but the science of it is. Um, yeah. I think I literally I heard a rumor like 10 years ago, and I haven't charged my phone at night since. For there's the way no, lithium ion works. There's no reason at all for it. It's it's like a superstition, you know. Anyway, the point is, anytime I try to write on paper, I switch to my phone because I love to move stuff around, and so I end up cutting and pasting a lot. And so if you look at any song I've been part of writing, usually I've, there are probably like 30 choruses, you know, like with small tweaks of the same thing, you know what I mean? Same melody, but like move this line here, move that line there, and it's one of those things, especially in collaboration, someone helps you. Uh, helps affirm uh, at the uh, the 11 a.m. session, we're talking about bringing confidence in collaboration, Jerry and Carrie. And I think when you've got a collaborator, you can go, hey, is this crazy? And they go, oh, no, I actually really like that. And that can help you keep moving. Um, but there comes a point where you just go, I, I feel good with what this is. Um, so yeah, I, I'll stop talking, but uh, maybe yeah. at some point I'll say more about something else. Can I say something? To that? Yes, actually, please. The 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 difference between you two is something that I think is important to highlight, which is there is no right way to express yourself. There's no right way to critique because you're you're like I'm on paper and I'm like have fun, you know. I'm you're, not always on paper. Right. Every now and then, yeah. But it's like the process for every individual in this room or whoever is watching, like whatever you create or whatever you want to do. One of the things that can impede you from just being honest and creating and putting something together, whether it's whatever, fashion, music, can be thinking that you have to be married to a process and not giving yourself freedom to do it, right? And so, like, I even look at my buddy Marty here. Marty's like, uh, he's like, when I make a song, it comes out, right? And I'm like, I have a thousand songs that'll never come out. And he's like, Andy, I have a folder in my, you know, because we text each other songs back and forth. What do you think about this and that? He's like, I have folders of unreleased songs that I love from you. And I was like, yeah, they're never going to come out. But I'm okay with throwing stuff against the wall and being like, I hate it. Throw it away, 
right? And I think um, that should be okay. And then some people are like, nah, if I make something that's true to me, I'm, I'm going to push it out. And um, yeah, you don't have to be married to anyone else's process. Like it, it can be incredibly frustrating for me to see the speed at which other people work. And I work so slow. And I'm like, man, I just wish I could be like them. But like, that's their path. That's the way they create. That's their thing. I might just do like one song a year and they might have four albums out in a year. And I'm like, man, I wish I could move at that speed. But I think if you pay too much attention to that, it can cause you to, um, yeah, it might like, it might create something in you that's good. It might force you to like try and experiment something new or it can really uh, mess up your flow and and make you feel uh, well, like pressured to do something you don't want to do. Like I've had so many moments where it's like, if I don't put out new content, they're going to forget about me and then I'm going to never, right? And so I'm like, all right, now I got to rush something out and it's not good and then I'm not proud of it. And so there's all that tension. Um, but I think the more comfortable you feel with your process, the more you're going to like let other people have their way and you have yours and be okay with it. It might be helpful. And every person's process is different. Yeah. I love that you're taking the time to explain that because you're not looking for someone else's formula. You're looking for how you were divinely designed to express your story. And that is the most important thing that you seek out, not to emulate someone else. That's not your divine design. I loved what Doe and Aiden both said, and Luke as well. All of, all of you have expressed that you have to have something to say. <laughs> it's empty if you're just writing to write. But there's got to be a spark, even if it's the melody. It doesn't have to be words. It can be the emotion that is evoked, the melody that you're playing on your guitar or your piano. But you have something to say. You're not just writing to write. You're writing to build. You're writing to inspire. You're writing to ignite. I know in my life, there were years as a teenager that I was intimidated by the process. And there was a private process of growth happening in my life that I was unwilling to share with others because I was fearful of what they would think. I was fearful of um, just being embarrassed by what I had to bring to the table. There came a point when I was 16 years old where I had an encounter with God. And for the first time in my life, I knew that I had something to say. And so speaking just to speak is empty. But writing because you actually have something to share, it'll change your life. And it'll fill you with the faith to finish the process. And so I just want to encourage you that this whole experience is about your divine creativity. And it starts with a relationship with God. You know, every part of our creative process, it comes down to a foundation of knowing that it's bigger than ourselves and that God is in it. And when we talk about Jesus, that it's not just his name up on a wall, but that his life and his love is embedded, not just in our every breath, but in every idea, every melody, every conversation, every blank page of opportunity that stands before us, that he's in it all. And I think that there are seasons in our life as writers that we hit a wall, like there there's inspiration and you start with the blank page and there's some beauty, but then how do you finish it? Like, how do you get to a place where we created this? It's done. You know, Leonardo da Vinci said, I, I'm, never, I'm never finished, it's done. Meaning that there comes a point where you gotta put the paintbrush down and you gotta say, I could work on this piece for the rest of my life, perfecting it, redoing it, tearing it apart and putting it back together again. But today it's done, on to the next. What is the hardest part of the creative process for you? And I just wanna pitch it to all of you. You can jump in, share, maybe Aiden, you you share first. What What's the hardest part? I think finishing is hard. I think sometimes having like getting like those final lyrics or like, and I'm such a, a critic to myself. I'm so hard on myself creatively. And I feel like probably we all are. It's just how we are. And I, I don't know, for me, it's been getting over that has been involving other people, you know, trying to find people to bring in and knowing that there's a limit to what I can bring sometimes and going, cool, how do I bring in someone who's amazing with lyrics or melody or whatever? Um, 
but a lot of the time I feel like what makes it so hard to finish is that I'm like not inspired and like coming back to kind of what we we're saying before, like it's almost like a, like a dry sponge, you know? And like, I feel like so much of the writing and so much of finishing a song or doing whatever it may, might be creatively is like actually 95% of it is just living life and being open and being like a sponge to things that are happening around you. So that when you go into the room, it's really like, it's not this tedious thing. It's a joy to like just squeeze the sponge out, you know? And that has the part for me that's hard is sometimes the sponge is dry. And I'm trying to finish, I'm trying to grind this thing out. And sometimes it's best to just stop it. I can come back, but like stop it. Stop trying to edit it on the spot try something new or just live life a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think the hardest part sometimes, for me anyway, I don't know about these guys, but like it's- Step like, away and come back? Oh, yeah, that's for me has always been like a saving grace is going, just leaving it. And sometimes it's years. And I always find that those, they always find their way back. If a song's awesome, it will find its way somewhere and somehow. Like there's songs that we would all have this, but it's like songs like from 10 years ago that now have- somehow without me even knowing I'm singing a song. I'm like, how do I know that melody? I'm like, oh, that was something that I was trying like 10 years ago and now it's found a new life. And so, yeah, I just learned to like not hold on to things tightly at all. Just like, like Andy was saying, like having a Dropbox full of folders of the, you know, of songs that you're just not using and being cool with like, cool. All right, whatever. Next thing, next thing. And like creating not for others to hear it, but almost just because you want to say, get something out of you and, and using like writing as like almost therapy in a lot of ways. So that's, I don't know, that's how I get over it, I think. It's beautiful. Yeah. It, Del, what, what is the hardest part for you? I feel like he took all of my little answers. I'm sorry. I'm but sorry. you know what? I'm I think we all I'm resonate. Listen, I'm a pastor's kid, so I'm going to make up something. Get ready. <laughs> no. If I, okay, he said something though that was like, it's something that I hold true to my heart, which is writing is surrendering, forever surrendering to the never ending process yeah. of experiencing and expressing. Yeah. Like you just need to go, like he said, you just need to go live life and, um, and you're a sponge. There was something else you said, like sparked a thought that is lost in the file cabinet, but like it was so good. So I'm going to uh, pass it over here. Can I ask you something about collaboration, though? Yes. Because I know that you write alone and you collaborate. Yeah. And it's a hard balance and yeah. anybody can weigh in on this, but how do you know who to collaborate with? And how do you know how many people to? How do you make those yeah. decisions? It's tough because sometimes you share and you feel overexposed. You feel vulnerable and then yes. maybe it goes a direction that you didn't see it going. Absolutely. It can go so good or it can go so bad. Like, how yeah. have you? what have you learned along the way? Gosh, so that's sparking little fires in my brain. I don't think you ever really know. Like, you just got to step out and, and do it. Like, that's great. And then you'll after you have an experience with someone, then you get to know how they write. And you're like, okay, I don't want to give this to them, you know. But then other times you just have to live life with this mindset. You're going to write more great songs. Like, the moment you say, like, this is the best song I'll ever write, that sucks for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're never going to create anything great again. What kind of limits are we putting on God and on ourselves? And that keeps you from like, that's like somebody's saying like, I'm, yeah, this is taking it to an extreme level. Sorry, guys. I'm staying in this uh, bad relationship because it's the best man I'll ever meet ever again. You know what I mean? So you got to think that way. Like there's so many more songs that are going to come through you. And then like we have a superpower because we're connected to the Holy Spirit and to God, like the number, the OG, you know? So every people are always saying like, oh, there's nothing original. There's nothing. Well, actually I could get a download from heaven <laughs> and say something you ain't never heard before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you just got to. Yes. Thanks, guys. Thank you. No, but you just got to have that confidence that you're going to write more songs. It's yeah. beautiful. I love that. I, I, to both questions, um, talking about the hardest part of the process, um, I think what Aiden was saying about being self-critical, um, my personality, I think, is what you, that's what you would expect from me, and I think that's how I was um, in high school. And I think I got to a point where I just uh, let that go. And I think it's because of, the fact that I knew if I were self-critical, I probably would be terrible. 
you know, like maybe it's, I'm, I'm not critical cause I actually am really, really bad at it. So it's like, I have to not evaluate it at all. Um, and I think that helps. I don't feel a lot of pressure to produce something great. I think I like the idea of let's finish an idea and I don't really feel like I have a lot of control over, um, I have control over the, the level of detail I put into crafting it, whatever the melody or the lyrics or, uh, later on the arranging. And I love that whole process, but I don't think I really get to control if it's an amazing song or not. I, I get to finish it. I get to control how much work I put into it. And then when it's done, I, I don't, I'm not trying to make a great song. I'm just trying to make a song. You know what I'm saying? I just want to make something that's done and then worry about the rest, you know? And for us, because everything I've done is within a church context and collaborative, I don't have, I don't, I'm not an artist. I don't really even think of myself as a songwriter, um, which doesn't make sense, but it's more like, I like to do stuff like that, but I don't see myself as like, this is what I do. It's like, I'll do whatever, you know? Um, but because it's not tied to who I am or it's very much, there's a, a, a weight in a positive sense of, I want to bring my best to church and I, I want it to, um, be helpful for people. Um, but I, it, it's not about achieving something for myself. And I don't say that to sound humble. It's more that that's just been my experience with it. And it makes it easier for me because I, I don't think it puts pressure on me. That said, the hardest part of the process for me, I think is energy. Because I think often what stops me from going after a creative idea is knowing how much energy it's going to require. And um, the songwriting thing, it's this weird tension of like, I really like it and it is fun, but it's actually not a lot of fun a lot of the time, (laughs) you know, Um, in terms of like, you know, overflowing pure joy. It's like work and I like working that's fun but I whatever you think it might be like and it's different for different people and there are moments where it's very easy and it's flowing and it's natural it's always fun when you finish and you go oh we did it you know like we pushed through whether it took three hours or it took months or years um so I think but the hardest thing for me maybe it's just a season of life thing of being um you know doing what we're doing with church and we we have a lot that we're working on and then i have three children you know my six week old daughter is in the back of the room so um thank you thank you i think also you bring up like a really important point because luke doesn't just write music but he he's a writer whether it's writing a sermon or writing a blog or um writing in all different forms and i i know that different types of writers are represented in this room and there is a discipline to it. You think about people that do this for uh, uh, for life. They live in Nashville or LA or Miami and every day they have three writing sessions and sometimes you don't feel like doing it, but it's a discipline that you're developing and going, I, I, I may hit a wall, but I'm not going to give up. You've been writing for a long time now and you are such a champion of collaboration, Andy. Like, I would love to just hear your thoughts on, like, just the grind of it, but also the joy of sharing it with people. Um, But actually, like, I was thinking about you and how you freestyle, and you're amazing. Do you just have, like, a freestyle in your spirit right now? Is there a flow? Like, is there something that you would like to speak over, Vu Basil, today? Because I feel like it's there. Like, I feel the energy in the room. I, I don't know, yellow. I'm, I'm glad you asked Andy and not me. <laughs> Uh, the spirit isn't moving right now Um, but I'm crushed no uh, spent too many uh, recesses doing that uh, my whole life no it um, I think for for me collaboration uh, like when you were asking how do you know who to collaborate with it's like um, there's, there's two things one is I've I've learned Part of me is like, just try it, right? Just be like, oh, I think that'd be interesting. Bring them in, let's try it. And being okay with spending four hours and you leave with absolutely nothing. But uh, even in that, like what um, Aiden was saying is sometimes you'll create something. Like I've created entire songs and then like the one lyric gets used in a different song. So maybe making that whole song was just for this moment. You know what I'm saying? Um, That's happened a ton, even on this new album that I just put out, like, I got in with, um, yeah, anyways, that's a different story. I don't want to talk. But, uh, yeah, 
uh, yeah, it's try it, try to get in with people. And then the other part is like, um, trying to, trying to see if you, if you rock with someone's taste, like you like the way they make decisions, like bring them in and ask them. And, uh, I've, I'm the kind of guy who like, I'll have anybody, uh, like offer their insights. Cause I never know whether or not like the pizza guy stops by. I'm like, let me play you something real quick. I'm like always trying to show people. I love that. But in the create, so I like their criticism, uh, from the outside. Like they don't know you, they don't know what this yeah. is. And just seeing the way yeah. people respond, that's very helpful for me. But like in the creative process, like while I'm cooking up with somebody, um, Typically, that's just kind of like you're saying, throwing paint. You're trying to figure out what sticks. Uh, it's been fun uh, creating collaboratively, but I have a issue when you ask, like, what's the hardest part? Is for me stopping and like being okay with it. Wow. I'm a perfectionist, and I want to make everything perfect. And um, I feel like some of my identity is a little too t- uh, tightly tied to my success as a writer, as an artist. So that becomes a tension for me to like um, put it out and, and be done and take my hands off it you know there's some songs that I've worked on for years you know like trying the song trying that I put out on the new album I wrote that in like 2018 it just came out in 2021 because I went through 40 versions of the beat like making it try and having other people collaborate and try and so and sometimes a song is supposed to take a few years right and then right. sometimes it's supposed to take a day. Fifteen minutes. How have yeah. you learned to like discern when it is done? How have you yeah. learned to walk away? Because sometimes that is part of the process. I don't. I think I'm still learning that. Like I'm still trying to figure it out. But uh, sometimes it's like you have a tour. You need to put this album out so you can go on tour. <laughs> the rooms are already booked. You need to a go. deadline is powerful. <laughs> Deadline's powerful. Yes, Deadline's helpful. And here's the other thing that's happened. I'm like, this is awful. This is awful. This is awful. I walk away from it for a few months. I come back. I'm like, this is amazing. Why was I? I was tripping. Just put it out. Um, so perspective and time, you know, that helps. Uh, there was this, uh, all right, I'm done talking. No, it's beautiful. <laughs> tell it. Tell it. Well, I was just thinking about like, And if you stories. don't tell it, freestyle. <laughs> I'm not going to let it go. It's just so okay, we know. I'll, tell, I'll do this. I'll tell you the story that shows the rap. Okay. So uh, we were working on some music. Uh, we went to this uh, this place in Philadelphia that was like, it was an old church. It got turned into a recording studio. And I wanted my friends to just get in and for us to create our own samples. So I had uh, Chad from King's Kaleidoscope, a couple guys from Soul Surplus. Uh, and they, they put them in this room and they started playing piano and guitar. And I'm like, just jam out. And just make weird noises. So they're putting blankets on the piano. They're doing weird stuff. And I was like, yo, you stand over in that corner of the room. And you stand over here so it'll make reverb. And all like, just literally playing, splattering. And I'm over the talk box. I'm like, yo, sing, how high is too high? And then, how high is too high? They start singing just randomly. And and one dude starts riffing. And so this madness is happening. And I'm like, say, how far is too far? How far is it? And I'm just throwing words at them and just watching how they interpret it. We took that recording, and after we recorded it, we're like, all right, this is just a big 15-minute mess of nothing. And I gave it to my boy, D. Steele, and he starts taking little chunks and pieces and moving it around and making samples out of it. So um, he gives me it, and uh, it's just this doom, 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 doom. And it, that's, the, that's the beat he gives me. I'm like, this is incredible. I run downstairs. And I'm sitting down in front of this crazy thing that we just made, and I feel all this pressure to write something, and I have nothing. Like, I'm sitting there for like an hour, and nothing's <laughs> happening, the beat is looping. And so I took that moment to be like, I'm so frustrated right now, I'm gonna take this frustration and this anger and put it into the song somehow. Like, I don't even care, I don't care how it comes out. So the first thing I said was, I'm, I'm uninspired right now. So that's the first lyric uninspired and there was like this all right what's something else that rhymes with that and there was this brutalist approach because I was so angry I'm just like I'm just gonna start throwing out words that rhyme this isn't even gonna be cool and flowy it's uninspired 
Under fire, now somebody's getting fired, terrified, paralyzed, Twitter game, verified, married life, very far. Understand I'm on demand, undermanned, son of man or son of Sam. I'm somewhere in between the two, been meaning to spend the evening, be with you. Oh, I know I need it too. Do I believe? I believe I do. On my faith walk, took that cynic, I mean the scenic route. Get lost, I be aloof, Adidas on, still need a boost. What was the eating fruit? I'll ask him when I see him. Daily bread, that's per diem. Then I'm fasting like a BM, riding past you in the PM. In a stolen car, that's fleeing from the scene of the crime. Apollo Creed in his prime. Rocky verses, I'm a person that's trying to believe I'm worth it. I'm working through it, but work is. So I'm like, I'm Let's just. Let's go! I, I, you can't keep yeah. So, so just, That was Give this man his cellular device back. What? There's no case that's psychotic. There's no case that's dangerous. So that ended wow. up becoming a song, song called Clarity, which is like one of my favorite songs. But the creation process of it was accepting that I was angry, that I was frustrated, that I didn't have something to say, and then channeling it. So I remember I recorded that verse. Yeah uninspired, under fire, like, I don't need, this doesn't even make sense. I just recorded it. I came back upstairs and everyone's like, how'd it go downstairs? And I'm like, <laughs> all I have, and I didn't like it at the time. I just was like, I was just saying things, getting it off my chest. And I'm in the control room. And I was like, all right, let me play all what I did. And I plug it in and I let it run. And I'm like, this is trash. I don't even understand. I'm just words, right? And like, it's playing and the whole room is like, what? This is great. And I was like, for real? Did y'all like this? They was like, yeah. So then I held on to that for months. And then I finally tried a chorus. And then I, and so it piece by piece came together. But sometimes the hardest thing is like giving yourself permission to start. Because you got all this expectation. It's got to be incredible. It's got to be great. How about it's just true? Yes. Just honest. Just really where you are. Start there. And that authenticity is so powerful, and it speaks to people. And I think that when you're listening to music, you can tell when it came from a real place of living life, not trying to regurgitate what sells, what's going to make it on the charts, but actually having an authentic conversation. Sometimes you can listen to somebody sing, and it's like they're just bearing their soul. And it may be the biggest heartbreak that you've ever heard, but you can't look away because you're drawn in because they invited you into that sacred space. I think there's power in that process. Um, how do you get to that point, though? I think you just shared that you just go for it. Like, don't hold back. Wherever you are, start there. Like, that's what I think about when I think about prayer, like talking to Jesus. People say, well, how do you pray? Well, just start where you are. Yeah, if right. you're angry, start angry. Yeah. If you're depressed, start depressed. If you're worried, start worried. If you're full of anxiety, start there. If you're thankful, if you woke up and had a great cup of coffee, start there. But like, how do you talk to God? You start where you are. Yeah. And when it comes to writing... Um, there's an authenticity that shines through in the greatest writers of every generation. How do you get in that headspace, Doe? You've written some of my favorite songs. You have written several songs that I wake up, not just for years, now for decades of my life singing, songs that really touch the soul. Um, how do you get in that headspace to draw forth what's uniquely, with, with all the rough edges, with whatever it is, how do you, how do you pull it out? Where do, where do your thoughts go? Um, I was hoping you would call on me because I was like, I got something to say. Um, yes, I love that. <laughs> you, you didn't want Aiden to steal it all first. I was gone. Huh? <laughs> you didn't want Aiden to go first and take everything. Yeah, he's gonna take all my answers. Yeah, and I was giving her like the twitchy eye, like please call him. Um, no, because sometimes you're pushed to that point. You know what I mean? Like. I, I remember writing for uh, for my EP, and I was sending songs in to a group of people, and they were like, oh, you know, that's pretty, but, like, you know, we have enough of that there. People, like, who love me and who are protective get mad when I tell this story because, like, how dare somebody tell you? But the truth is, like, it made me, I, I, I came to my breaking point, and then I realized, 
oh my gosh, there's like a layer of the truth that I never tell in songs because I'm afraid. I'm afraid of telling the truth about how I really feel. And and so I I was pushed into that. And so I one of the other things that I wrote down, I'm so glad that I got to say something here because when I we were talking about this conversation, I was like, I got to tell them to lean into their breaking point. We're so afraid of of that breaking point because we think that what will come out is a mess, but but what will actually come out is the truth. And and the truth is actually the only thing that you can get behind that will actually help somebody else. You don't realize there's a group out there that's going to say, "Oh my god, me too." I'm so glad you said I'm so glad you finally said this and there was a level of freedom in it for me. And I realized that I didn't want to talk about it until God set me free and patched me all up and got me looking all pretty. Then I was going to talk about my little testimony. But God sometimes is like, no, I want you to talk about it while I'm walking you through it. I want you to talk about it while I'm setting you free. And and so like, there's power, like sometimes you're pushed into it. And when you feel like you're about to break, to me, that means you're about to strike water. Yeah. So don't give up. Don't give up. Stay in the process. I yeah. love I love what you said. Sometimes we want to wait till we have it all together. I know even on my journey with um, in my marriage, I've been married to my husband, Rich, for 15 years now. And for eight of those years, like, oh, you guys are something. We appreciate the encouragement. Thank you. Still in love. Uh, but for eight of those years, we were trying to have a baby and we had gotten um, discouraging words from our doctors. And for so long as a communicator and as a writer, I felt like I had to wait till I was on the other side of that trial until I could share it because it didn't have a happy ending because it wasn't all tied up with a bow and I hadn't had the miracle yet. I think the beautiful thing about divine design is understanding that God is not on the other side of your miracle waiting for you there. He's with you right now. And you know what? That's the miracle. That's the miracle. Right here, right now. God is with you. And I wrote a song right before I got pregnant with our first child after eight years of waiting called Day and Night. Because I realized that I didn't have to seek something else to be satisfied in life. That he was the only one that would satisfy me. And I think when we realize that Jesus satisfies every desire that we have, it gives us the freedom to alleviate the pressure of what we got to say, what we got to write, because we already have our self-worth. Now, whatever we're writing is an overflow of what He's deposited in us. And I just wrote it from the verse. The psalmist says, He placed the moon as a faithful witness in the sky. And I realized that It's not just the people around me who are the witnesses to God's faithfulness in in reciprocal, um, in in each other's lives. Also, all of creation is being able to watch your faith journey. And if the moon is a faithful witness of God and of, of our individual stories, then why would we for a minute be intimidated of what others would think I think that as you write your unique story, that it's going to touch people's lives that you won't even know until you get in eternity. What that blog post meant, what that letter that you wrote to your coworker meant, putting pen to paper, what that story of your family's legacy in that journal meant, what that song meant, what that rap meant, it, it matters. So I just want to speak life over you, that God wants to develop and continue to shape who you are. And it starts right now. Not when you have the studio booked, (laughs) not when you have the right producer, not when you have the ear of that person that you aspire to be like. It starts right now. So let uh, collaborate with your creator. Because he's waiting to create with you. And um, I want to let you know some really good news before we close. 
Um, Dominique and Aiden are both sharing their original music with us this week. And Dominique's actually kicking it off tonight, 8 p.m., going to be sharing. Guys, her music is phenomenal. It's just incredible. Her voice, incredible. Aiden, his music that he has not released is some of the best music I've ever heard in my entire life. I'm not joking right now. Like, we're so honored to have you here. And so we can't wait for 8 p.m. tonight. Bring some friends. It's going to be a special night. Going to be having a conversation with Camilo and Evaluna, who are married and just incredible creatives, lovers of Jesus. And uh, I want to pray for you that you would feel encouraged to go out, step out, do what God's called you to do. God, thank you for every person in this room, every person listening or watching today. I just pray right now they'd feel that whisper deep in their soul that you're doing something. You're stirring them. You're, you're encouraging them to step out, to take pen to paper, to share what they've been creating with the people around them, to let some other hands in on the process to be vulnerable enough, Lord, to uh, enter into that beautiful thing that is called collaboration. God, I pray that you would develop all of us into who you've created us to be, divinely designed to share your love and your light. Thank you for this moment. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we can't wait to see you for the rest of this week. And put your hands together for everyone.